today we are going to start to look at our very last chapter in AP Chemistry. We're going to be looking at Electrochem. Uh, in chemistry there's a lot of different types of reactions as you know. The two big transfer type of reactions are what we end the school year with. So we just got out of a chapter recently where we were looking at acid-base reactions where all of those involved the transfer of a hydrogen ion. So if you put hydrochloric acid in water, for example, that hydrogen ion, that proton, transfers from the hydrochloric acid molecule to the water, uh, leaving a chloride ion and a hydronium ion behind. What we're going to be looking at in this chapter is a different kind of transfer. We're going to be looking at the transfer of electrons. So in that example that's provided, uh, you would be taking a piece of solid copper, put it into a solution containing some silver ions, and then those two substances react with one another. As you look on the product side, the copper in this reaction turns into a solution and the silver starts plating out as a solid instead. So just a little reminder, all substances around you are electrically neutral. Uh, if they weren't, then you'd have uh, like a stapler crawling across the desk to try and jump on top of a tape dispenser. And that doesn't happen since everything's neutral. So copper, the element by itself, is neutral. The silver ions that you see there are part of a neutral solution but the anion piece of that solution must be a spectator. Maybe it's a silver nitrate solution. Um, so we cancel out the nitrate ions since they would be spectators. Uh, and then during that reaction, you can see that the copper on the left is that neutral, but then it becomes part of a compound on the right-hand side, maybe like a copper to nitrate solution. Again, the nitrate get canceled out because it's a spectator, but the, when the copper goes from being an element by itself to part of an ionic compound, uh, it used to be neutral and now has the charge of positive two. So it must have lost two electrons during the course of that reaction. But where did they go? Uh, well, the silver starts with the charge of plus one as part of an ionic compound in solution. But then on the right hand side, the silver is an element by itself, neutral. So it went from plus one to neutral, it gained an electron, but because there are two silver ions in our solution, that happens twice. So the copper loses two electrons, but the silver gains those two electrons. It's the same two electrons that we're talking about. It's a transfer from one, one substance to another. We're going to be looking at redox reactions in this chapter. So we started redox uh, way near the beginning of the year, and so we're going to do a little refresher today of how redox reactions work. Uh, Leo the lion goes grr, right? Uh, whichever substance is losing electrons is being oxidized, whichever substance is gaining electrons is being reduced. We recently talked in our Thermo 2 chapter about whether reactions would be thermodynamically favorable or not, spontaneous or not, if they happen all by themselves without any outside intervention or not. So if you have a thermodynamically favorable redox reaction, it can produce electric current all on its own. If something's thermodynamically unfavorable, if it's not spontaneous, you can force that re redox reaction to go by imposing an electric current on that reaction. So because you're either generating electric current or imposing an electric current to uh, in these reactions, we call this whole field of chemistry electrochemistry. A quick little review of some redox vocab. Uh, some terms that you've heard before, oxidation, reduction, oxidizing agents, and reducing agents. If something's being oxidized, that means that you have that loss of electrons, LEO. Uh, you have an increase in the oxidation number. So maybe like in that example that we had before, you have something that starts as neutral and then it turns into a positive charge as it gives away those electrons. If something's being reduced, you're gaining electrons and your oxidation number goes down. 
that oxidizing agent, reducing agent. Remember the terms that can get a little confusing there, so just to make sure you keep them straight in your head. The oxidizing agent is the thing that is getting reduced, which chemicals are gaining electrons. The reducing agent is the one that's getting oxidized, which substance is losing the electrons. The types of redox reactions that we're going to be looking at, there's two different types, direct and indirect. You've seen direct contact redox reactions many, many times over in both AP Chem and uh, your chemistry classes from sophomore year. So you might remember doing a demo where you put some copper wire in a solution of silver nitrate. There's that redox reaction again. Uh, and here's what that reaction looks like in real life if you actually do this demonstration. So you might remember seeing this because we demoed this for you guys uh, at least sophomore year, if not during AP, earlier in the year too. Where you take a piece of copper wire, solid, you put it in that silver nitrate solution, and then it starts to turn into copper 2 nitrate, which is blue. Uh, which is why the solution color changes. And then that stuff that kind of looks like mold growing on the wire is actually silver atoms growing on that silver wire, uh, on that copper wire, excuse me. It's a cool reaction, but you can't get any useful energy out of that chemical reaction. It is a thermodynamically favorable reaction. If you calculated the delta G, it would be negative. It happens all on its own. All you have to do is put the piece of copper wire in the silver nitrate solution and it does its thing. But is there any way for us to harness that energy that comes out of that chemical reaction? Yes, there is. If we have an indirect redox reaction, also known as a battery, electrons can be transferred through a wire from the reducing agent to the oxidizing agent. So if we could somehow force those electrons to, um, rather than just staying in solution between the copper and the silver nitrate, could we force those electrons to go through a wire instead, have that transfer take place outside of the reaction, indirect redox, uh, and then we could harness that energy. We get our batteries. So here are the two different types of electrochemical cells. If you have a voltaic cell, you might also hear those called galvanic cells. Those are our thermodynamically favorable product favored redox reactions. So they have negative delta G's and they have K values greater than one. The chemical change that takes place inside a voltaic or a galvanic cell produces an electric current all on its own. They take, you could take that chemical energy and convert it into electrical energy. If you have an, what's called an electrolytic cell, electrolysis reactions, those are our thermodynamically unfavorable reactant favored redox reactions. So they would have uh, positive delta G values or K values less than one. In order to make the products of that reaction, you have to force it. And so we would have to use an electric current to force the chemical change to take place. So voltaic cells and electrolytic cells are opposites of one another. Uh, in this part of the chapter, we're going to focus uh, on voltaic cells, the galvanic cells, the batteries, the reactions that go all by themselves, um, and how we can harness that energy.